All right, guys, this is your uh, interview for Nikki's Pop Dish. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Yeah, no problem. All right, let's just start out with uh, Jamie. How did it feel going back to your old stumping grounds? Orlando, you mean? Yeah, going back to Lake Hall High School and everything. It's it's fun. We go back. We actually come back. We graduated about, oh, geez, 15 years ago now. Yep. It's depressing. But we come back at least once a year. Yep. Um, and we always end up at the same place at Pretzels, which is a bar in the movie and also in real life. So um, it's kind of an annual tradition for us. So Scott, would you say this is like art imitating life? Uh, for me, more so than at some of the other actors in the film. I, you know, we kind of loosely based some of the events in the movie, or Jamie did on on our actual ten year high school reunion. Uh, and then kind of pulled some stories from some of the other actors. Jamie was very generous in giving us a script that was, uh, that we weren't bound completely and totally to. So every every actor was able to bring some of their experiences in as well. Uh, but I lived in Japan for a year and my character in the film did as, you know, so it, this is probably the most hyper real uh, project I've ever worked on for myself. It is a little strange. We're going to show the movie to a bunch of people. We went to the reunion, the actual reunion that the movie is based <laughs> on tonight. So we're going to watch the film, the fake version of our old reunion as a reunion. It's very confusing. For me, it's a little. For me, it's almost like mom and dad were breaking out the video camera and trying to embarrass me in front of a, a room full of friends. So yeah. we'll see how we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so we got to talk about just the little moment in the film I don't want to give it away to viewers or anything but all I'm gonna say is yellow shoes <laughs> did that happen for real you mean at our reunion yeah no no one's talented enough at our high school <laughs> to do something like that <laughs> except for Scott Scott's a singer no no that was a, that was something we came up with uh, 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 fictionally with the with the actor okay speaking of Scott being a singer Scott you had mad skills on that microphone as an MC. So, is there anything you would like to tell everyone that we don't know about you? Are you like a rapper on the low? No, I I got into this business beatboxing. Actually, that was my end to the business. I, I beatboxed in a couple of different acapella groups and then started doing it uh, all over the world. Did it professionally for seven years. Paid my bills by beatboxing, and that's eventually took me to New York. And I did a little show off Broadway beatboxing, and then got my first opportunity to act. So uh, I guess I picked up some NC skills along the way. Uh, I used to I used to beatbox for rap battles, uh, uh, freestyle battles. So I give me a little beat. something right now. Give me uh, a little come something. On. Come on, you know I was gonna put give you on the. Come on. Every time, every time, every time. You know, like ah, that's whatever. good. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Jamie, what about you? You got any skills, any underlying talent other than being an awesome writer, of course? No, that's literally my one skill. <laughs> I'm not joking. This is like the one thing I'm good at in my entire life. Okay, so out of all the characters, both of you guys, who do you most identify with? Like, who do you most identify with Jamie and you, Scott? I identify with them all, as weird as that sounds, because I wrote them all and I had to find a way in for all of them, uh, along with the actors, obviously. So it's not like one of them represents me or who it is. I sort of understand, and I hope everybody else does too. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be as universal as possible. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Mackie's character, Dre, is who I most identify with. Right. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think I really do kind of identify with my character in the film. Jamie kind of wrote my character in the film as this eternal optimist, always looking forward, yeah. never looking back, and, and I, I try to live my life according to that creed, uh, and I don't know if Jamie had picked up on that, or if Jamie just kind of wanted a, a character that, it's a little bit of a rarity, if you go to high school reunion, there's, there's very few people that come back with that level of positivity, yeah. uh, and so it was really fun to kind of be able to cut loose and kind of really play that aspect up. Not to mention your character's name is Scotty P. It's like Kismet, like you were meant to play that role. Oh, he was yeah. meant to write, I, I wrote it for him. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah. Jamie, I think you may identify with all the characters because, I mean, you said it is loosely based on you guys' high school experience from when you graduated in 97. Yeah, yeah, so. it is. It is, but the, the, the night itself is based on it, but the characters, we didn't we didn't go and rip off our friends' oh, storylines yeah. or anything like that. But, yeah, it's uh, kind of interesting. You know, talks that we had had, there was a conversation we had with Channing Tatum after we came back from our 10-year high school reunion. We were working on a movie called Dear John with him, and he said, wow, it's, that's I can't believe you guys went back. I could never go back to my 
we said we asked him why, and he said something along the lines of, "Well, I want to remember the people that I knew in high school as I remember them. I didn't want to go back and shatter that image because they would treat him so much differently." And uh, you know, then we have in the film Oscar Isaac's character being a huge rock star and him coming back and having that exact same thing happen to him. So it was more about the circumstances in the evening that were based upon our our. Uh, reunion and also other people's experiences with theirs. So, uh, but all the characters were were created by Jamie and then acted uh, very well and very freely, uh, collaboratively by everyone that was in the film. What are you working on right now, Jamie? Anything new? Yeah, I'm going to do this Paramount movie called The Flight Before Christmas, which is another big ensemble movie that I'm going to write and direct. Mm. Maybe. Um, it's going to be a comedy. What comedy, is it? Yeah, broad Christmas comedy. Oh, and okay. Another big. I, you know, I promised after doing this that I would never do another ensemble what? because these jokers are hard to keep track of. Oh, are they? But uh, but but I actually really, when ensemble movies work, they're my favorite kind of. Movies, I love so, them. Um, I'm I'm uh, kind of for some reason repeat my first mistake and do it all over again, hopefully. <laughs> Scott, what are you working on? We know you have Heart of Di Dixie. Anything else in the other movies? I'm currently on the second season of Heart of Dixie, working on that. We premiere October 2nd mm -hmm. uh, of this year. And then I have a film that's coming out on Valentine's Day called The To-Do List. It's a raunchy R-rated comedy with a ton of actors. It's another ensemble film that I think actually really works. Aubrey Andy Plaza. Sandberg, Aubrey Plaza, who was in this movie, she actually got me in that film. Uh, but it was written by Maggie Carey, who is Bill Hader's wife from Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Hader's in the film, Andy Samberg, Christopher Metz Kloss, otherwise known as McLovin, mm -hmm. Aubrey Plaza, Connie Britton from Friday Night Lights, Rachel Bilson is also in that film, myself, Clark Gregg from The Avengers. It goes on and on and on. Really funny cast, fantastic. And uh, it's it was a different, I play a, nine, a 90s grunge rock lifeguard. So it was, a, <laughs> it was a much different role for me to play and I had, I had a ton of fun doing it. Are so. you gonna have extensions? Most of the rockers around that time. I had a whole wig on. I had a whole Kurt Cobain situation. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> okay, last question, guys. Are you guys going to the Emmys? Coming up I'm this, going this to Sunday? The Emmys, yes. You're going to the Emmys. Are you, now I don't want to get into your personal business, but real quick, are you going to go with uh, Fox's favorite new girl who's also, I don't know, her name sounds with Dewey. I think or she'll Joey be there. She will be there. Oh, she'll be there. Yes. Well, we, can we expect to see a picture on the red carpet or anything with you and oh, Zoe? I'm not going on the red carpet. I have red carpets. Oh, you don't? Out. Oh, I really? Yeah, it's a, I have a fear. It's like heights and red carpets. That's why we didn't have a red carpet for this movie, actually, yeah. because Jane there's was a, I, there's white. cameras <laughs> flashing and people yelling, and I don't like. I know. I know. <laughs> you're you're a calm, quiet spirit. I can yes, tell that I about am. you. Yeah. That's exactly right. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview with me, Nikki Bowers, for Nikki's Pop Dish. I really appreciate it. And I hope I get a shot of you, Jamie, this weekend on the red, well, not the red carpet, but at least in the audience with Zoe Deschanel. But, I mean, she's just going to be there. And you, Scotty, I can't wait to see your next project. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right.